2022 has been the year where I've lived the V10 life. The BMW S85 engine is still one of the cheapest ways that you can own a car with a V10. The engine in this thing is so special and yet if you look at the recent news in the car industry, the V10 is dead. Audi has launched what they've said is the last V10 R8 and it looks like the latest Lamborghini Huracan is following out the door. So why is that the case? Why is the V10 dead while things like the V12 still exist? Well, before I go into why this engine layer has been dumped, let me first chat about how the V10 came to be in the first place. Back in the late 80s, the FIA decided to ban turbochargers in F1 because boost was just getting too silly and the cars were becoming too quick. In the world of naturally aspirated engines, having more cylinders and therefore being able to fit more displacement in generally means there's more potential for power. That's why in the early days of motorsport, there was truly monstrous engine sizes so that they could fit as much air and fuel into a cylinder to create the biggest bang. But once the FIA swings in and caps displacement at 3.5 litres, the racing teams are suddenly scrambling to solve the engineering task of which engine layout has the most pros and the least cons within that displacement. When that 3.5 litre engine limit came in, the F1 teams had different solutions to that problem because in 1989 and into the early 90s, the F1 field was powered by V8s, V10s and V12s. There was a really nice selection. But after Senna and Ratzenberger's crashes, the FIA decided that they wanted to slow the cars down even further and decreased that max displacement down to just three litres. And it was that shift that allowed the V10 to completely dominate. I hope you guys have been enjoying the content we've been putting out recently. We personally feel that 2022 has been a real gear shift for the channel. So thank you all so much for watching. Without you guys, there would be no channel. And without our group of sponsors, we wouldn't be able to do the really adventurous stuff and have silly project cars like this. And we have a brand new sponsor on the channel today. One I think you guys are really gonna like, and they are Displate. If you're like me and you have absolutely no interior design talent, you could probably do with some cool stuff on the walls of your bedroom or garage to express your passions, be they cars, movies, art, whatever you like. And by heading over to Displate using our link in the description below, you will find top quality printed metal posters like these. I'm a bit of a movie buff and being Scottish, Shrek, is one of my all-time favourites. I quote it almost daily, I put the soundtrack on far too often for any normal human being, and just look at this, Duloc in the background, Shrek, Donkey and Princess Fiora in the foreground, absolute perfection. So this is one of their medium-sized posters, and this is one of their large metal prints. Star Wars was a huge part of my childhood, especially the prequels, and I always loved Darth Maul as a villain. I feel he was criminally underused in The Phantom Menace. And look at this silhouette print of the final fight in episode one. Maul with his double lightsaber, the two Jedis in those awesome poses. I absolutely love this. I might try and mount this one at the cog. I love movies, but there are a shed load of car options too. Bugatti Chirons, F1 cars, Porsches, McLaren P1s, JDM Legends. This plate has so many cool posters that will look sick on your wall. They are really simple and non-damaging to mount to your wall. It is literally an adhesive square, a magnet, and boom, it's mounted. So, they look good, they're easy to install, they're pretty kick-ass in my opinion. So, if you fancy some cool metal prints of your own, use our exclusive link in the description below, where you will get 32% off your order if you buy one or two posters, or 38% off your order if you buy three or more. Again, a massive thank you to Displate for sponsoring today's video. 
Ferrari kept working with its V12 for as long as they could because they felt they could eke out that bit more power and a V12 was still within the ethos of the company. But with Williams and McLaren dominating with their V10, it wasn't long before the entire F1 field was powered by 10 cylinders. It seemed that the V10 was the perfect compromise between the lightweight nature of a V8 and the power potential with a V12. At 3 litres of displacement, it seemed that having 300cc per cylinder with a certain bore and stroke led to maximising power while keeping frictional losses and overall weight to a minimum. And diving deeper into that engineering, the dimensions came out at roughly a 95mm bore and a 41 to 43mm stroke. Super, super over square. And let's take a look at what those dimensions actually looked like. Look at this piston. Back in my school days, we would have called that a ch That is a ch piston. But let's remind ourselves what those dimensions actually sounded like. What a time that was. And as ever, F1 technology then started to influence road car engineering. And that meant that the 90s and the early 2000s became the heyday of the V10, not only on the track, but also on the road. It started with the Dodge Viper, but then came the big hitters, the Porsche Carrera GT, the LFA, the BMW M5. But I think we owe a lot of respect to Audi and Lamborghini, because if it wasn't for them, the final nail in the coffin for the V10 production engine would have been the final Dodge Viper that rolled off the factory floor in 2017. So thank you to Audi and Lamborghini for persevering. But as I've said, Audi has revealed the final V10 R8, the R8 GT, and it very much looks like the Hurricane Technica will be the final V10 powered Lamborghini. I reckon at some point in 2023, the V10 production engine will be completely gone from the car industry. So. Back to my original question then, why is that the case? Why is the V10 gone? Well, in the racing world, things have simply moved on in the push for efficiency. If you can push out north of a thousand horsepower from a V6 turbo hybrid powertrain, that simply makes more sense with regards to making good engineering decisions, not being wasteful and keeping things relevant to the current car industry. I don't have the fuel consumption figures, but I can guarantee F1 cars today make the same, if not more power and in relative terms, sip fuel compared to the V10 Screamers from 20 years ago. In road cars, it's much the same. Turbocharging technology has completely ran away with it. The Carrera GT made just over 600 horsepower back in 2004, and the new Merc C63S now outdoes it with a four cylinder turbo and a hybrid system. Twin turbo straight sixes and V6s can now completely butcher this thing in a straight line while using literally half the fuel. Now, what I find interesting is with the V10 gone, it leaves this weird hole in the car landscape. There's still plenty of V8s kicking about, kind of, and the V12 is still hanging on, putting up a much better fight than the V10. Ferrari have kept their 6.5 litre engine going. In fact, their new SUV has that under the bonnet and will clearly sell incredibly well. And in the niche multi-million pound level of hypercars, the new Pagani has a twin turbo V12, and the Valkyrie and GMA T50 have arguably two of the best V12 engines ever made. It seems when regulations don't mean much and you just want to go for power, V12s are the engine of choice. Also, these hypercars were spawned from bosses and engineers from an older generation, from a time when the V12 was always king. I reckon if guys and girls my age, 90s kids, we're calling the shots, we'd prefer to hear 10 cylinders rather than 12. And would you believe it, this is where McLaren comes storming into play. At Pebble Beach this year, they revealed something called the Solis GT, a track-going hypercar that originated on Gran Turismo, but they've decided to bring into the real world. 
Now, you'd expect it to be powered by the traditional McLaren twin turbo V8, but no. They're going to sell this thing to customers with, get this, a 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10 from a Le Mans car. Now, I get it. If you heard 5.2 litre V10, you'd think it must be the Audi Lamborghini engine, but no. This thing has an engine from our besties at Judd and is a full racing powertrain derived from the GV engine that was once found in the Pescarolo 01 prototype in 2006. Now, this engine choice is amazing. I absolutely love it and it really gets me going, but it is a very strange choice. While you've got Aston and Merck and Gordon Murray opting for the top tier of engine technology in their hypercars, McLaren has opted for a 16 year old endurance racing engine. Is that going to be suitable for a top tier hypercar? Well, we'll just have to find out if we ever get a drive. Maybe, just maybe, there is some hope for the V10 engine. F1 teams are working flat out to make synthetic fuels work and the rumours floating around the paddock are that F1 cars could feasibly resort back to higher cylinder counts in the near future, in which case they might sound like this again. If synthetic fuels can be proven in F1, that engineering could then trickle down to road cars, but personally, I cannot see V10s ever making a comeback because I think it will just be seen as too much of a step back compared to the incredibly efficient V6s that we currently have. You never know. All we can do is hope. So I think I'll leave it there, but you can never have enough V10 engine noise. So editor, please play us out with some more ear melting loveliness. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I've been Mike and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe.